All right, let's uh, get started here. So we're going to be working on spawning planets in the right spot. So just a second. Here. Here is our lobby map, which we're just also using for kind of a drop point for all, all of our assets right now. Um, they're just literally just hanging around everywhere. But right now, I'm going to work on getting the planets in. So if we really, really have one, we'll modify it within game. So I'm going to copy that over to our actual game place. Control G to make it a model. Name it planet. And we'll set the primary part to this piece. Okay. So then we'll rename it a little bit. I'm just going to call this main. This thing called atmosphere. Um, and that's good. Okay. So now we've got our one of our planets here. So I'm going to bring it, put it into server storage under map assets. And I have my old assets here. So I'm going to get rid of the old one which for reference looks like this so we're upgrading a little bit okay so what I want to do is spawn it in a radius so let me uh, show what I mean okay so the map is basically a big circle or will be so imagine kind of the playing field being something like within this circle and uh we'll just uh flip some stuff really quick so we've got this area within this circle that's our play area um, and what we want to do is spawn planets within this circle kind of randomly um, and so I don't know exactly what it'll look like, but essentially what we'll have are just a bunch of these guys everywhere. So maybe we just have a bunch of these guys everywhere. I don't know how many. The hard part though here is we want to make sure that they're equally distributed across the map. And we also don't want to make them collide with each other. So how do we do that? Um, well, there's a couple of different ways we could go about this, right? So let's look at some different ways we could program this. So there are two methods that come to mind immediately, which, spoiler alert, we're not going to do either of these. Um, one would be a simple way where we basically look at kind of the rectangle area around here and then we check to make sure it's in the radius and we get a random point um, and if it's within the circle then we use it if not we discard it that would work but we'd have to do a lot of different checks to make that work um, so probably not that but let's look at what that would look like so let's say we how many planets do we want let's say just for the sake of argument let's say 50. now if we wanted to spawn 50 random planets well we do a little for loop to get each planet. And let's make some variables also. Let's say the radius of this circle is a thousand. So play radius equals one thousand. And let's say we want to place the planets again. For each planet, we want to get a random point within that play area. So again, the first way we could do this is simply by getting a random point um, within that, basically an x, y coordinate based on this radius. And a radius is always going to be based from the center point out, right? So for instance, I'm not going to get the center of that perfectly right there, but essentially from the center of that circle out, that is my radius, so to speak, or quite literally, really. So if that red line represents my radius, then if I want to get an x, y value, I could just duplicate or not duplicate, multiply that by two to get the, the diameter and then kind of create a box out of that. So let's imagine now I'm going to create a diameter based one.
So now I have the diameter. So now I could get like basically the, the x axis distance. And let's say I also want to get the y axis. Well, you know, just rotate it. And now I can kind of create this box out of those uh, <coughs> two axes there. So for instance, here I might say, consider assuming that the center of the map is at their origin, 0, 0, 0. Um, and I'm just going on the x, z axis here, kind of look, looking downward. Um, <coughs> we could say that, you know, my x range is somewhere between, you know, negative play radius and play radius. Uh, it's not a valid code, but the idea that this is kind of my range, right? So that's kind of the, the area I have to deal with. So we could just grab a number between those two values. So if I get a random number generator, and I can just do <clears throat> RNG next number. So now I'm getting some value across this diameter, that blue line, that's my X axis. And then I get for my Z axis, the same thing. So now I've got a random point and now let's pretend I have some function that says place planet at that coordinate. Okay. Um, we don't need to implement that for this part of the video, but that's fine. So now we were able to place a planet within these two axes. Again, the, we have a problem here. And that problem is this X value here, that this blue diameter, because it also stretches across the whole purple one, the problem is you get this whole area. So as you can see, that goes outside the bounds of our circle. Okay, so that's problematic. So how are we gonna solve for that? Well, one way we could do it again is just check to see if my XZ coordinate is within the radius. So we could do that just by getting the distance from the center. So the distance equation is always what is it? Math dot square root. Ah, uh, it's x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Um, but again, because we're at the, we're going to the center, we don't really have to do that. All we have to do is literally just get x and z here. Um, typically speaking, multiplying two values like that is faster in most languages instead of using S squared things like that um, or powered operations. I, I believe the new Lua interpreter optimizes for that, so it really doesn't matter, but old habits die hard. So we got the distance here now from our from the center of the map based on our random points. And we could just check, you know, is if uh, distance is less or equal to play radius, then we are within the radius and we can spawn the planet. Okay, that, that solved part of the problem. However, now, oh, well, if I want 50 planets, I maybe have an issue now because if I have any that are out of bounds, it's just gonna skip those. And so my, my net result is less than 50 planets, possibly. It's possible I would have all of them. It's possible I'd have none of them. <clears throat> I mean, there, there's no way to know because we're just getting random points. So how would we solve this? Well, we, we could do a, a kind of a, I don't know what, to, what they call this, but we could say known planets equals zero, and we're just gonna count up. So now while known planets is less than planets, do this, and we'll just increment known planets every time we make a new one. Okay, that, that would work. Um, Theoretically though, uh, again, there's no way to know how many times it's gonna get a point out of bounds outside of this radius. So performance is really unknown with something like this. Now in such a situation like this, it, it probably wouldn't be that bad, um, but we still wanna do something a little better than this. Okay, so what else could we do? Uh, another way we, we could go about this is by getting a random radius and basically saying, I'll get rid of these lines. We're gonna pick an, a random number between my zero and the size of my radius, okay? 
So that will kind of adjust this line randomly. And then we'll choose a random rotation and we will rotate it. I don't know how to rotate on a, on a, on the center point, but I have an idea. Let's get rid of that. Create a line. So we get a random point. Which uh, doesn't show up at all. Whatever, you can kind of see that. And the idea here is, oh my goodness, rotating is awful. You would rotate that line around the radius randomly. So you get two random numbers, one to adjust the distance here, the radius, and the other to adjust the rotation around the circle. So the way that would look is pretty straightforward as well. Where, okay, so let's scrap some of this. We'll go back to the for loop. Okay, and instead of getting an xz coordinate that this way, we're first gonna get two numbers. So we're gonna get radius, and this is gonna be a, a random number between zero and our play radius. And then we're gonna get theta, the rotation, which is gonna be between zero and two pi. Because two pi in radians is the rotation around a whole circle. And now we can get the xz coordinate by simply, for x would be math.cosine, theta times the radius we chose. And then for z, same thing except sine. And now we know we are within the right distance, so we can place the planet. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now I'm gonna pause and create a quick a sample and show why this actually isn't going to work still and we'll get into why and how to fix it. Okay now I have this little example here where this black area right here will be our play area. Just a small little radius but just to demonstrate. And our code here to generate the planets I've pasted in the script here. There's some other things here just to generate in real time but the, the overall algorithm here is just the same. We generate a certain number of planets and we're just going to create a little part and put it there in, in real space. So I have it running. I have a little generate button here or input here that I can change the value. So let's say I want to generate um, 50 planets. So right there, boom. So we can see that all the planets are within our radius. So that worked as expected. Um, let's generate some more. Let's say uh, 500. Interesting. Okay. So that worked. Um, Maybe you can start to see a problem here, but let, let's generate more. Let's do 5,000. Ah, and see there is our problem. See how it's super dense at the center and then a lot less dense at the edges. This is an example here where we don't have an equal distribution across our area here. Um, I'm not really gonna go into all the reasons as to why, but yeah, there's a really helpful little solution for this right here. Let's let's just go through this. So this, the question is as follows, um, pretty much exactly what we've seen. We need to generate a random point within a circle, a uniform random point. So I need to generate a uniform random point within a circle of R, radius r, which we've already defined on our end. Um, he realized that just picking a uniformly random angle interval between zero and two pi and uniformly random radius I would end up with more points toward the center since for two given radii, the points in the smaller radius will be closer to each other than the points in the larger radius, which is exactly what we are seeing here. Exact same problem. And the solution, pretty straightforward. This guy says, you know, this is how we generate it. So the biggest difference here is how we choose our random radius. As you can see here, the biggest difference here is simply we're running the square root on the random number we get. That's it, that's the biggest difference. And he, he goes into detail here, you know, he says, yeah, let, let's look at the math that leads up to this. Assume the simplicity that we're working with a unit circle, nice and easy. So the average distance between points should be the same regardless of how far from the center we look. This means, for example, that looking on the perimeter of a circle with a circumference two, 
we should find twice as many points as the number of points on the perimeter of a circle with a circumference one. So again, right here, right at this, this inner ring should have a certain number of circles and the outer ring should have more to be uniform. Since the circumference of a circle, two pi r, grows linearly with r, it follows that the number of random points should grow linearly with r. In other words, the desired probability density function, I have no idea what that means, grows linear. Since a PDF should have, uh, have an equal area to one and the maximum radius is one, we have this little function. So we know how the desired density of our random value should look like. Now, how do we generate such a random value when all we have is a uniform random value between zero and one? we use a trick called inverse transform sampler. And it goes into some of the more details here. So long story short, the solution is very simple. All we have to do is run square root on our radius. So again, this is the, the solution math at square root. And now we will have an equal distribution. So I take this line of code and I paste it into my actual one up here. I'm gonna get rid of these, run the code again. Now if I do a bunch of points, oh, I don't think I copied the code, hold on. There we go. So, okay, the obvious problem now is what? it doesn't seem to fill my play radius. So how do we fix that? Well, it's actually quite simple. If you look back at what he said, we need to also multiply by our radius, r. So going back here, we got a random number between zero and play radius. Now we need to multiply by our play radius. Again, that's because we're getting the square root here. So all we have to do is add multiplication there to our line of code. And now, when we paste it in, we'll get something way too big. <laughs> so here's an example of why it's really important to prototype like this, um, because I made, a, I made a mistake. And the mistake is quite simple. And, uh, oops, what's going on here is quite simple, right? I, I just misread this. Right, what is he saying? We're not getting a random point within our radius here. We're just getting a random point between zero and one. And then we're multiplying by R. So if I knew how to read properly, I would have done that right. So again, a random number here is not between zero and play radius, it's zero and one. And then we're multiplying by our play radius. So that's why I always like to do little prototypes like this and throw it into a kind of an actual space because um, then you can kind of actually see, you know, is this working as I expected it to work? Um, and sometimes you just got to try things a little bit. So, all right, there we go. So now we have an equal distribution across our playing field. So if I do 2,000 points, 5,000 points, we see, we see that we don't have that dense middle of the circle anymore where it gets thinner as we go out. Now it seems to be equally distributed out across the circle. All right, so in the next one, I'll go into actually implementing this into the game.